one other problem. The, uh, the battles between the Heliumites and the Zodangans, for the most part, they looked all right, except there was one big problem. And that problem is the two sides looked way too much alike. Uh, they basically had the exact same style of ships and pretty much the same uniforms. The only difference is one side had blue flags and one side had red flags. One side was wearing a blue sash on their uniform, the other side wore a red sash on their uniform. Made it hard as hell to tell who was fighting who, especially during the final battle, which happens at night and is very dark. In fact, there's even a... The movie almost seems self-aware of this problem, because there's a moment where uh, Tars Tarkas tries to attack one of them, and they're like, no, 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 look, blue, blue, we're wearing blue, we're on your side. Okay, we're good? Yeah, okay. Almost seems like the movie's saying, yeah, we know, we screwed up here, just go with it. Those are really most of the complaints I have. Um, so I guess I should get into the good stuff. Um, let's see, one character in particular, there's a character called Woola, who is basically John Carter's dog, for lack of a better term. An alien, six-legged monster dog. <laughs> well, Woola is awesome, although does look very cartoonish. Um, the, the thing about Woola is that uh, he... Was it a he or a she? I think it was he. Well, we'll go with he. He can move just as fast as John Carter, even though Carter has the advantage of not being affected by Mars gravity. But whenever Woola moves, it looks like something out of a Roadrunner cartoon. In fact, I half expected Woola to start going, meep, meep, like every time he got going. Uh... But if, if you can get past the silliness, Woola is an awesome character. Just trust me on this one. Woola rules. In fact, the movie needed more Woola. Um, let's see. Most of the... Uh, apart from having trouble telling who was fighting who, like when I mentioned the Zodangans and the Heliumites, the battles were more or less pretty good, with the exception of one fight towards the end. Um, try not to spoil too much, so I won't say who was fighting who, but there were two characters fighting each other, both leap into the air, slice with their swords, one comes down dead. Basically the same as the opening for Ninja Gaiden on the NES. It's like, significant battle between two major characters in the movie, and it's over in two seconds. You could have dragged it out a little bit and made it a bit more interesting. I, mean, I know the battle was maybe supposed to be one-sided, but... It's like, it's almost as bad as the fight between Tars Tarkas and Tal Hodges in the Asylum version. I, this is amazing. The, Disney is making so many of the mistakes that the Asylum made. It's like, Disney, you were supposed to be better than this. Stop it. Uh, uh, what else, what else? Um, Tars Tarkas. As I said, Willem Dafoe pretty much steals the show here. The interaction between Tars Tarkas and John Carter, I thought, was very well done. Um, in fact, there's a... There's a running gag that goes on throughout the movie where uh, right at the beginning when Tars and John try to introduce themselves, which is a bit tricky because of the language barrier, but, I mean, John's able to figure out, it's like, okay, he's called Tars Tarkas, and he tells him, I am called John Carter of Virginia. And Tars mistakes this to mean that his name is Virginia. <laughs> and this goes on for most of the movie. There's even a point somewhere but halfway into it where John's like, okay, fine, whatever, I'm Virginia. What, whatever, I'll go with it. <laughs> but yeah, there's also a very funny moment towards the end where, uh, where basically they, uh, Deja Thoris, of course, eventually gets, if you know the book, um, Deja Thoris is forced into marrying Sob Thon. Um, I don't think I'm spoiling too much there because that is in the book. And, of course, John Carter attempts a rescue along with the Tharks, so... You know, they all gather up their forces and they charge mightily into the city of Zodanga. And they find it completely deserted. It's like, what the hell? They find one lonely guard there. It's like, uh, there's only a few of us behind. The rest of the people went to the wedding in Helium. The wedding's in Helium? Oh, shit. And then Tars just looks at John. He's like, Slap! <laughs> that was awesome. Uh... Yeah, I, I love the interactions between John Carter and Tars Tarkas. They're very well done. Absolutely well done. Um, unlike the Asylums movie, they did not 
include the the Martian atmosphere generator at all, which you know supplies all the Martians with plenty of oxygen so they can actually survive on that planet. It, it's never mentioned in Disney's movie at all, which I don't think is a bad thing because honestly, that was one part of the book I never really cared for. It, I mean, the way it goes in the book, it just it's mentioned very briefly right in the middle just for one chapter and then never mentioned again until the very end. And then all of a sudden it comes up, oh God, we're all going to die because we're running out of air. It just comes completely out of nowhere. Um, I think the Asylum kind of handled it better by, you know, spreading it out over the entire movie, but really it didn't need to be mentioned at all. And I think Disney made the right call not mentioning that, you know, because that's not supposed to be the focus of the movie. The focus is supposed to be the romance between John Carter and Dejah Thoris. Because e even though there is plenty of action, it is very much an action-oriented movie, it's also supposed to be a romance movie. That's, that's part of the story. And, and speaking of that romance, I thought it actually worked very well. Um, it's, it felt very real, the way they did it. Apart from, you know, the little Disney touches of, you know, them getting married after knowing each other for about a week's time, you know, it's Disney, what can you do? But, you know, beyond that, it felt very real. It didn't feel forced or tacked on just for the sake of throwing a romance into the story. It worked. And it did help that the actors were very good in their roles. Um, even though they are both the actors who played Tar... Uh, excuse me, not Tar Starkus. Um, John Carter and Deja Thoris were relative unknowns. But they're both very good at what they do. Although Taylor Kitsch, who plays John Carter... He does kind of suffer from Twilight Syndrome, where he speaks in a half whisper most of the time. It's a very common thing in movies nowadays, and it's a trend that I would like to see die a horrible, painful death, because it gets annoying after a while. Maybe I've just seen one too many Twilight movies, but I can't fucking stand it. Yeah, I think I've said pretty much everything I need to say. Um... It's, it's going to be hard to tell whether you're going to like this movie or not, because people have been very divided so far. Um, like, like I said, 49% of Rotten Tomatoes, so it's pretty much split down the middle. Some people liked it, some people didn't. Um, and there's a lot to like and a lot to hate. If you were a fan of the books, you will probably enjoy it, although they do take some liberties with the story. So if you're a hardcore Edgar Rice Burroughs purist, you will probably have issues with it. But... I think it will still appeal to the to the Burroughs fanboys. I think it will. Um, if you're not familiar with the source material, but you like science fiction, give it a watch. You'll probably still enjoy it. Uh, just, you know, don't go into it expecting anything mind-blowing, because you, that's not what you're going to get. I mean, it's, it's nothing earth-shattering. It's just, it's okay. Um, now, if you don't want to spend money on an expensive theater ticket... Wait for the DVD, give it a rental. Uh, if you're not a fan of sci-fi, this won't change your mind. Don't bother. Uh, anything else I need to say? Oh, yes. Um, I did see this movie in 3D, against my better judgment. Um, and I didn't really leave the theater disappointed by the 3D. It is a post-conversion. This was not shot in 3D. But as far as post-conversions go, it was very well done. Now, I think part of the reason why I thought it was very well done is I went to a theater that actually uses decent 3D projectors. Um, they actually know how to show a movie in 3D. It's the same theater I saw Avatar in a couple of years ago, which, you know, the 3D in that movie looked phenomenal. The story, eh, but, you know, the movie at least looked good. And in 3D, John Carter works, but at the same time, I don't think that really added anything to it. I mean, you, you can tell that they did not intend for this movie to be in 3D when they made it. Um, either that or the director just doesn't know how to shoot a 3D movie. Uh, of course, if the director wanted to shoot a 3D movie, he'd be using 3D cameras. But, you know, the 3D doesn't hurt the film, but it doesn't really help it either. So I would say if the 3D showing is all that's available, it won't hurt anything. So don't worry about it, but if a 2D showing is available, save your money and go with that one. You're not missing anything. I promise you it won't make a difference. So, yeah, that's about it. So, yeah, final verdict, it's okay. That's about as close to glowing praise as I'm going to get for this movie, but yeah.
It was all right. Definitely better than the Asylum's version, but, you know, that is not exactly a huge accomplishment. <laughs> so, yeah, that's about it. Until next time. We did not cause this. But this very night, we will end it! I was too late once. I won't be again.